Hello and welcome to this presentation. I will talk about the migration of Azure Media Services assets to MediaKind MKIO. The agenda is as follows. I will quickly cover the Azure Media Services retirement announcement, then I will introduce MediaKind MKIO. After that, I will list the useful tools, web interfaces, and API to be used for the migration. I will show you how to migrate your first assets with three different approaches, using the MKIO web interface, the AMS migration tool from MediaKind, and the Azure Media Services Explorer tool. Let's start with the Azure Media Services retirement, which was announced to happen on June 30th, 2024. You will find all the details about this announcement in the article. The list of partner solutions is provided on the web page. As you can see, MediaKind MKIO is one of the solutions available as a replacement for Azure Media Services. MKIO is a compatible offer from MediaKind available on the Azure Marketplace. It provides on-demand and live video workflows. It can use your existing AMS source assets if you want to encode them with MKIO. And you can also stream existing encoded AMS assets without the need to re-encode them or move the video files to another location. MKIO can reuse your AMS assets or storage files. To manage this platform, you can use the MKIO web interface or the REST API. You will find in MKIO most of the features that you can find in Azure Media Services. For example, you can stream clear or DRM content, encode your content using transforms and jobs, stream live sources using SRT or RTMP as an ingest protocol, and set up streaming endpoints as you can do with AMS. It is possible to connect a CDN to these streaming endpoints to scale the output. MKIO comes with a player called MK Player that can be embedded in a web page, similar to the AMS player. Let's explore some useful web interfaces, tools, and API. The first important user interface is, of course, Azure Media Services in the Azure portal. On the left, you can see the AMS resources like the storage accounts associated with the media account, the streaming endpoint, and the video assets. In that screen, you can see the source video content in a dedicated asset, and also two encoded assets, one published for clear streaming and another one published with AES encryption. The encoded asset has several tracks which correspond to several MPEG4 files stored as blobs in Azure Storage. A streaming locator exists because the asset has been published for streaming delivery. Another important user interface is MediaKind MKIO. The web page on io.mediakind.com describes the features and displays the prices. To subscribe to MKIO, click on Get Started Now. It will redirect you to the Azure Marketplace where the product is listed. To subscribe, click on Get It Now. A few hours later, once approved, you should see the MKIO SaaS product in your Azure subscription. If you go back to io.mediakind.com, you should be able to sign in with your corporate account. Select your MKIO subscription or instance and then navigate between the resources. On the left, you can find the same type of resources you are used to dealing with in AMS. Assets, storage accounts, streaming endpoints. On the assets page, you can see that I have no assets available yet. From the io.mediakind.com main page, you can navigate to the documentation to learn more about migrating AMS assets to MKIO. 
there is a chapter dedicated to this topic, and you will find a technical article on bulk asset migration with a link to the IMS migration tool. This open source tool, written in Go, can be used to migrate assets as well as asset filters, streaming endpoints, streaming locators, and content key policies from AMS to MKIO. The tool is available on GitHub, as shown on the screen. Migration can be executed in either one step or two steps using a JSON file. I will demonstrate this later in the presentation. Another useful tool is Azure Media Services Explorer. It is an open source tool that exposes advanced AMS features and provides detailed technical information about AMS entities. While you can compile the code locally, a signed MSI installer is available in the release section or through WinGet. Support for MKIO has recently been added. This tool facilitates the migration of assets, locators, content key policies and storage to MKIO. Once installed, use the tool to connect to an existing AMS account. Here, I'm using a service principle to connect to my account, but interactive authentication is also possible. There is an optional connection to MKIO offered. Enter your MKIO subscription name and token. I can see my three assets and select some of them to migrate to MKIO. I will demonstrate such migration later in this presentation. For developers, access to the MKIO API allows you to build your migration application or integrate MKIO operations into your existing code. From the aio.mediakind.com webpage, click on Documentation and then select API Reference from the top menu. All REST APIs are listed on the left side, organized by entities. To migrate an asset, you can use the create or update asset REST call. All parameters are documented. Please note, for added convenience, I have developed an SDK for .NET based on this API description. You will find it at nugget.org. With this SDK, migrating or creating an asset in MKIO can be done in a single line of code. The SDK source code is provided on GitHub. You can submit issues or contribution through this repository. Let's now proceed with our first asset migration using the MKIO web interface. The initial step is to establish a connection between MKIO and your Media Services Storage account. In the Media Services page, within the Azure portal, navigate to the storage account on the left. Select the storage account. You can now manage this storage. MKIO requires a shared access signature, also known as a SAS token, to access this account. Go to Share Access Signature, generate a SAS token for the blob service, container, and object resource types. Adjust the expiration date and generate the token. Copy the blob service SAS URL. Split the URL into two lines, one for the URL and the other for the parameters. To connect to MKIO, go to Storage Account and click on Add Storage Account. Enter the storage account name. Use the first line for the URL, remove the trailing slash, and then the second line for the SAS token. The storage account is now connected to MKIO. As we aim to stream assets, let's create a streaming endpoint. On the left, click on Streaming Endpoints, then create a streaming endpoint. Specify a name, keep the default settings, and submit the form. By default, the new streaming endpoints starts. Now you can proceed with migrating our first asset. 
in Azure Media Services, not the asset name and the storage container. In MKIO, click on Migrate Asset. Provide the asset name and storage container. Your asset is now migrated. Let's check if we can stream the asset. We need to add a streaming locator and use the predefined clear streaming only policy. Click on Add, then Apply. As you can see, the asset plays back in the player and the streaming URLs are provided. They follow the same format as Azure Media Services streaming URLs. Let's grab the HLS URL, then go to MK Player on the left and paste the HLS URL. As you can see, the asset plays back in the player and a sample of HTML and JavaScript code is provided to embed the player on your website. Another method to migrate your assets is by using the IMS migration tool from MediaKind. I have a local copy on my machine. You will need to obtain an MKIO IPI token and pass it to the tool using a variable. The process is documented in the readme file. To obtain a token, connect to MKIO in another tab. As you can see, I haven't migrated any assets yet in MKIO. Use the provided link to retrieve your token. Store this token in a variable named MKIO underscore token, which will be used by the tool. We are now prepared to execute the tool to migrate our AMS entities. For this demonstration, we will only migrate specific assets and streaming locators, but the tool has the capability to migrate other entities such as content key policies. It can perform the migration process in either one or two steps. I will demonstrate the two steps process. First, Let's export the assets and streaming locators from my Azure Media Services account. As you can see, a JSON file is created. I can edit the file, removing the assets and streaming locators that I don't wish to migrate. Let's retain one asset and its associated streaming locator and then save the file. Now I can proceed with the second step, which involves importing the JSON file into my MKIO subscription. All right, the export is completed. Upon returning to the MKIO web UI, I can now see my migrated asset. On examining the details, I noticed that the streaming locators has also been migrated. The streaming locator retains the same ID, resulting in new streaming URLs similar to those exposed by Azure Media Services for this asset. The path remains unchanged. Only the host name has been modified. A third method to migrate assets from Azure Media Services to MKIO is by using the Azure Media Services Explorer. I'm selecting my AMS account and, optionally, the tool offers to simultaneously connect to an MKIO subscription. To establish this connection, you need to enter the MKIO name and a token. Now that we are connected, we can view our AMS assets and the status of the migration to MKIO. For this demonstration, 
I would like to migrate an asset that has been published for streaming with an AES key, also known as clear key streaming. Firstly, I need to migrate the AES content key policy. I select this entity, right click on it, and choose the create in MKIO option. The migration is complete. Next, I can select my published asset, right click and choose create the asset in MKIO. The tool suggests migrating the locators attached to the asset simultaneously. The migration process is completed. Let's examine the results in the MKIO web application. After refreshing the page, we can see the migrated content key policy labeled as clear key. On the assets page, the migrated asset is visible. In the detailed view of that asset, we observed that the streaming locator has been migrated. When applied, the HLS and dash URLs are displayed. However, the content cannot be played here as expected because the stream is AES encrypted. For content playback, it requires a JSON web token. I can retrieve the HLS URL and navigate to the MK player test page. Let's select HLS and clear key, then paste the streaming URL. Since I need a JSON web token for this demonstration, I use the gwt.io website to generate one. I must paste it in the license request headers using the correct syntax. Upon pressing play, the content now plays back using AES clear key encryption. Thank you for watching this presentation. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Have a great day.